Hello and welcome to Finding Respect in the Chaos here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm so glad you've joined us today. Today is a very important story about the new Planned Parenthood that has just opened up here in Honolulu. And I am happy to um, welcome here Ray St. Chu. And Dayton, you're going to have to help me with your last Dayton, name. I'm Kavarn. sorry. Kavan. Kavan. Sorry. I'm so bad at names. And even though you told me about it beforehand, <laughs> I still couldn't get it right. Sorry. No um, we are going to talk about some really important things that are happening right here in Honolulu. And, and Ray, I'm hoping that maybe you could give us sort of a little background of sort of the history of Planned Parenthood. How did it start? Well, um, 50 years ago, a bunch of uh, volunteers, basically they were all volunteers with uh, one physician supervising. Uh, and it uh, was basically just you know, two nights a week in, at Queens Hospital where uh, people would come in and ask for birth control uh, and ask for counseling and soon it uh, turned into a clinic and then there was some a lot of chaos there. And, uh, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, we had, um, uh, you know, several turnovers and, and various moves, but the last 15, 20 years, we have uh, been renting a, a space in, on King Street, which uh, is you know fairly nondescript, and you'd hardly know uh, what's going on or that our offices are there. But uh, the problem is that we've grown out of that space. Right. Uh, as soon sure. as we moved in, actually. <laughs> right. I'm not surprised. So you, are you seeing that? that Planned Parenthood started here in Honolulu, or did it start oh, on the no. mainland and oh, then no. move yes, there? Yes, yes, yes. It oh, started okay. on the mainland in 1916. 1916? So, yes. Oh my gosh, uh, I had no idea. 102 Don't years ago by <sighs> uh, a woman named Margaret Sanger and her sister, and mm -hmm. they opened up a, a clinic in Brooklyn first, and then it grew, and, and now I think we have about uh, 56 affiliates in 50 states. And, um, you know, even the states that are, you know, not allowing, um, you know, certain services such as abortion, at least they're providing the, um, uh, you know, uh, birth control uh, right. services. And uh, we also have this telemedicine uh, services where you can call and say, you know, I need a refill on such and such, and then it comes to you by mail, and it's, you know, fairly simple, hey, fairly inexpensive. Those are important health services that everybody needs. So way beyond the abortion controversy, you know, right. these are important health services for, for everyone. And, you know, just my own personal experience with Planned Parenthood. When I was a young mother, I was married to a man who was abusive. I finally stood up and left him, and he came and he raped me, and I got pregnant. And I went to Planned Parenthood because I, I was in a, a stage in my life where I was dealing with my own child abuse. I wanted to be the best mom I could be for the two kids I already had. Um, I didn't want to compromise them with this, and I came to Planned Parenthood, and I know you guys, I mean, that's what saved my sanity. I don't think I would have made it through that stage of my life without that help that I got from Planned Parenthood. And I know in my work with domestic violence victims that my story is not unique. It happens all the time, and, and it's such an important service for people and Planned Parenthood is so wonderful because they don't just take you in and shoot you back out again. I mean, there are all kinds of counseling that happens beforehand and during and after and made all the difference in my life. And I'm so grateful to everything that Planned Parenthood does and that, that you guys are involved in. I just want to say thank you. I've got to wear that for you. From, from me and from all the other people, too, that you guys help. So, okay, let's get back to the history. Now that you've got my history, <laughs> let's talk about the history of Planned Parenthood a little bit more. And as it started to come, come 
up now just recently there's a new building that's going to be yes, happening here let's talk right. about that because that's exciting and we've got some slides from the press conference so as we're talking about that if you wouldn't mind bringing up those slides sort of as we go along that'd be great yeah it's very exciting it uh, i think it was initiated over two years ago by christine Oh, and Chris, uh, if you go back one slide, picture. sorry, Christine, she's the one who initiated Chris, all of right, this even. She decided, yes. she's the CEO of our, um, well, how would you call it, a conglomerate? Our, our affiliate. And what? A, our affiliate, yes. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. the Hawaiian affiliate. The right. Hawaii affiliate, no. is that what it is, or just the... Fun parent of the Great Northwest and Hawaiian oh. Islands. Oh, so. right, right, right. It's a big, giant title, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Washington State, Idaho... Uh, Alaska, Alaska and uh, that's it right right now but we're taking Getting on ready to merge with more yeah that's coming to come that's great yeah wow. so anyway so she said well she's gonna look for some property because our lease was coming up and right. you know and we just can't continue to exist in that space because right. it's too small um, and uh, you know, of course, the lease was going up, too. And so she said, you know, I have never regretted buying a piece of real estate. <laughs> you know, and so, um, so she said, I'm going to do it. And then all of a sudden, you know, she said, we've closed. We've, we own it now. We own wow. It. And then, that's so exciting. And that's Christine Charbonneau, right? right. Christine yeah. Exactly. Okay. A fearless yeah. leader. Yes. Fearless leader, brave and fearless leader. <laughs> How so, wonderful. Then the next step, of course, is to improve it. It had already been a medical clinic. Uh, it was front clinic for many, many years. And it already had small examining rooms and uh, a lot, various sinks and, you know, uh, support staff. But she says, no, we're going to start all over again. We're going to do, do it right. So it's, it will last another 50 years. Right. So, right. So wow. on we go, and then yesterday was the grand opening, and and there was, you are, right there. Yes, giving was, opening <laughs> remarks. That was wonderful. Surely, very emotional to see this wonderful, you know, facility. It's incredible. Company. Yes, I couldn't believe it as I walked around, and I thought, wow, and everything is so new and so nice, and I'm sure Straight that'll make, the yeah, Straight to the eye, it really is. It'll make a difference for the patients. It'll make a difference for the people who work there. Yes. I think it's going to make a difference for everyone, right? It's a fantastic message to the community it that is. we care about you. Right. Please come and see us. <laughs> right. you know? And I just think, just in, you know, we were talking off camera, just in the current climate, um, right. really what we want to say as Pan Parent is we are here. We are not going anywhere. Our doors are open. I like that. Uh, and just in this moment in time, when you think of all that's going on politically, right. we're still thriving. Um, yes. We're opening a brand new building. We own it. We're in our community, and we're going to stay here for our community. Right. And we're going to continue to expand. So oh. we're never, ever thinking about Planned Parenthood an affiliate and a federation. We're never, ever thinking about how we're going to close. We're thinking about how we're going to thrive and continue to grow. I love that. And I think it's really important for people out there to understand that. With all the things that you hear in the news these days about, you know, Planned Parenthood being defunded and all these other things, Planned Parenthood is not going anywhere. So you guys, you still have those services out there for you. Don't lose heart. Don't well, lose we're heart. very fortunate in Hawaii that yes. there are no restrictions right. to, um, you know, to, uh, uh, you know, uh, birth control and, uh, and of course, a very small percentage of our services are involve abortions. And right. Usually most of the people find out early enough so that there are medical ways right. to abort uh, an unwanted pregnancy. Right. So um, very few. Right. What's the percentage, do you know? If you're looking at all the services that we do, you know, 3% of what we do? Three um, percent. Wow. We have, Think about that. That's we a have big thing. Many services. And the, the, the thing for us as Planned Parenthood is that we are so proud that we have that service available. Right. Um, for, you know, women who basically need the services. But then we're also there for everyone else in our communities with right. services like family planning. Because you right. really do want to plan for when do you want to have a family. Right. And what birth control is right for you at this time. Do you want, 
you know, that have a family right now, or you're thinking down the road in 10 years, then we can really work with you and the clinicians right. educate you on the best contraception for Right, you. so kids are being brought into the world when the parents are ready. Ready. Uh -huh. Instead of having these children come to parents that are not ready, and then the children end up suffering right. in the process. And then and from the clinical yeah. staff as well, just working with um, our, our patients who want to have a family and basically telling them how to have healthy children. So what you right. need to do to basically prepare yourself to have a healthy child. So right. that goes into it as well. So really it's, it's providing the services for ba what a woman needs. What right. do you need from us? And we're there for you. I've always thought that nobody has the right to tell me what to do anyway. It right. should be my own choice. Exactly. You know, because... We don't, people don't have that right. Just think I don't have the right to tell you what to do. Right. right? <laughs> you know, you, right. no one has the right to tell anyone really what to do. They just need to clean their own house, right, before they try to um, break somebody else's windows, right? Or right. Clean your own windows before you break someone else's. Um, well, we have a national campaign called No Matter What. Okay. And so it's basically no matter what your legislature does and what. You here. know, everybody say, we're here. We're here to help you. And, uh, and you know, most of it goes unimpeded. So Right, and that's an important message to get out there when all these news, you know, stories are coming out and all this scare campaign stuff right. is going on. So that's why I'm extra glad to have you guys on this show today, partly to celebrate the new facility, but, but also to get these important messages out to people because people are scared. And people are asking me questions all the time, and I'm like, well, you know, you don't always know all the answers. And so I'm, I'm happy to be able to reassure people. Thank we even you. had Maisie Hirono at the, the opening. I think I we have a slide of that too, right? She's a very strong supporter of women. She is. Yes. Yeah. She's amazing. I just, I have the highest respect for her and I think we are just so fortunate to have her here in Hawaii mm -hmm. in, in Washington fighting for us and yeah. and for women's rights and oh, I even got to take a picture with her. It was like a dream come true. <laughs> and in, yes. my, in my highest dreams, she'll come on my show one day yes. nice. and, and talk about sure um, how she's, well, she's been one of the founding members of the Women's Patsy. Legislative Caucus. Yes. And so, yeah, and Patsy Minks and, uh, and her were one of the founding members of the um, Women's Legislative Caucus. And yeah. all that they're doing and the new bills that are going through the session this time for women's health and for victim services, I think, is really important. And I think it's really So hopefully maybe one day she'll come on my show, too. Huh? I don't know. I'm small potatoes, so who knows? <laughs> but at least I got to hand her my card and shake her hand and take a picture with her, which was really special for me now um tomorrow is the big grand opening right yes and so, so is that to open, the to the right, open to the public yes. okay public. open to the public from please what time? come on down from 12 to 3 o'clock from 12 to 3 and the address is, is 839 eight. south baritania street and it's in honolulu hawaii 96813 all right. Spoken like someone who doesn't actually live here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> because most of us that live here know where we're 10 years. <laughs> Just uh, Diamond Head side of the police station, police uh, headquarters okay. on Baratania Street after between Ward and the police station. There you go. Okay. Yeah, there you go. So it's pretty easy to find. There's a... a Parking lot that's right there, too, so it's real easy. Yeah. So for, for tomorrow on top, the parking lot is going to be where we've got all the open tents and the food and the festivities, so there will be no parking on top of the building tomorrow. Okay. Um, so if, you, if you're coming with guests, the street parking, um, but if you're able to um, park further away and then come on into us, that would be great because we're having the festivities outside on that roof. Okay. Well, is the um, parking lot that's right next door to you guys, it's that's on open? Top. If that parking lot is open, um, obviously we're looking at, we're not sure whether or not it'd be available to the public um, oh, okay. tomorrow. So we just want to be cautious. Okay. About sort of right. So to parking that on the street, guys, um, come early so you can get a parking spot Please and walk do. in. Don't miss it. You will be bummed if you miss it. All right, guys, we have to take a break and right. we will be right back. Um, so don't you guys go anywhere because we're going to hear about the amazing programs and services that Planned Parenthood offers. So don't go anywhere. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. 
I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Hello and welcome back to Finding Respect in the Chaos on Think Tech Hawaii. I am here with some folks from Planned Parenthood and we are going to be talking about the important services that are there. Dayton and Chu, it's so nice. I mean, excuse me, Ray, I'm sorry, that's your last name, not your first name. <laughs> sorry. No. <laughs> um, so, Dayton, why don't you tell us a little bit more about um, all the different services that are involved and, and are available. Right. Um, you know, yeah, thank you for that. So, and mainly we do birth control. Mm -hmm. um, and again, when we talk about um, depending on what type of birth control a patient is looking for, whether it's, you know, pills for now, they're looking for a longer term type of birth control, depending on their family planning. We really do work with patients individually to basically mm -hmm. suit their needs with, with, with that type of contraceptive that's right for them. Um, we have well women exams and well male exams. Um, and I really do want to put it out there about the males because we want our males to come and see us. We do provide services to males. Right, patients. we always think of it as just being um, a woman's place, right. but it really isn't. Yeah. And men are, are being able to open up and reach out for help now more so than ever. Exactly. They're being supported in that. Right. Hey. And then going back to women as well, we have obviously the breast exams, cervical exams, and obviously treatments for that. If basically um, they have an abnormal pap smear, then we basically there's other treatments that we can work on, like colposcopies, or they may come in for a test called a leap. And then, you know, if there's additional work that needs to be done, if we find something that is, 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 does need follow up, then we'll refer them out to basically get, take care of that. Um, we do HIV testing. Um, we do SD testing, diagnosis, and treatment. Um, uh, one of the things we've just launched really recently is our gender affirming home and care, which is just so great to have in our community because we really saw a need for that. Um, sure. And we really basically looked at our community and what was the best thing to provide for our community. And our organization was able to roll that out in all of our states. So we're very happy about in that. In all of the states that come rolled out. That's awesome. Um, that, that we, where we manage. And then we have the HPV vaccine. We do um, PrEP, um, which is basically, you know, for our patients that may be known or uh, may get HIV, depending on what they're doing, this prophylaxis will help them. So we're really working with them so they don't become HIV positive. Um, right. And obviously pregnancy testing. And then one thing that maybe individuals don't know about is um, miscarriage management and also menopause management. Oh. So we have a plethora of services that we do offer to our patients, and obviously we do abortions. But as I say, that's just one piece of what we do. Yeah, like three really percent. Yeah, we really are about family planning. Right. You go down that whole big <laughs> list, and that's like at the very end, at the very bottom, when everything else. And I know, even in my own case, everything else was. I was counseled to have contraceptive right. afterwards, just in case he raped me again, because. You would terrorize me a lot. Right. So, um, you know, that kind of stuff is, is so important for people. It's so important for people because we don't, a lot of us don't know. Like now that I'm, you know, 60, I get it. I wouldn't be so scared. But when I was, right. you know, 30 years old, I was terrified. I didn't know where to turn or what to do. Right. And so, and I know there's a lot of people that are like that. And we have caring staff and clinicians that they can come and see. And when we're looking at the types of insurance, we accept all types of insurance. All types of insurance. That's so important. PPO. That's really important even to know that. Um, so you, you, do you have like a, 
a program or something that you're connected with all the Quest insurance too? We all go with Prudential with all the Quest plans. So oh, all, we, all the patients can come to us like Yulaloa, KHMSA, um, Ohana, um, United Healthcare. We're contracted with every single one of them. Right. Um, so for people who don't have insurance, we yeah, what about that? Sliding that was, yeah. scale, right? Sliding scale care no matter what. And what we're saying to patients who don't have funding, like we will totally help you with the services so don't be afraid to come to us we have programs that we where we can help our patients um because it really is about our patients feeling the dignity and respect yeah. and no embarrassment of, of the fact that you don't have the ability to pay so patients okay. which, who don't have insurance please come on down and see us don't don't be afraid to do that we'll take care of you uh it's so awesome and so encouraging to hear about and talk about and so walk us through what it would be like if someone called up and said, I need help, right? What's, what's the first thing that you do with them? Right. So we have a, our call center, mm -hmm. um, which is our patient access center, is actually in Seattle. So when they're calling, all our appointments are scheduled um, by our call center staff. So we actually don't make appointments in the clinic. They're oh. basically our paramount thing of doing is serving our patients. That walk through so the door, have, not being on the phone, the phone all the time. Wow, that's unusual for most doctors. So we have an amazing <laughs> right? team that take care of that. And also, um, our patients have the option to schedule online. So if you just look at Planned Parenthood, Honolulu, you can schedule online for an appointment. Wow. Um, so that is available. That's so, really anonymous. I like that. I'm right. sure a lot of people like that, anon that an anonymity right. to be able to just do it online. You can do it online. Um, and, and pretty much after that, so they'll take all your information, your demographic information, insurance if you have it. If you don't, don't worry. Um, they'll schedule your appointment for you. And then what you expect when you come to the center is um, you'll come in, we'll greet you at the front desk, we'll give you some forms to fill out. We're actually going um, live with our mobile check-in. So you'll actually check in on a little tablet um, and that's going to be going live next week. So which we're trying to cut down on the paper and make, no more it, <laughs> make Gosh, it easier nice. for our patients to check in right. and then after you check in for your services then you'll be seen by a medical assistant who will basically go through talk to you about you know why you're there for the visit take your vitals basically prepare you for to meet with the clinician or the doctor so depending on what service that you're having for the day right. um, once you've met the doctor they'll basically look at the reason for your visit give you that diagnosis and assessment and then take care of you, whether or not it's, it's birth control, whether or not it's something else that you're coming in for on that day, you need treatment, they will take care of that. And pretty much then, you're done. And we okay. really try to do that visit within an hour. So wow. from the time you hit the door, the time you leave us, we want to really sort of crack that down to you being there for an hour. Your wow, time... that's like unheard of. You can't ever go to a doctor's office and be done in an hour. <laughs> we'll come back Oh day. my gosh, that's remarkable. I wonder if, you know, being digitized, like the, going digital with everything, that really makes it... It would totally it, like, help with that speed. Everything, even for the, the office staff in the back, they don't have to take that written exactly. stuff and enter it into a computer. It's already okay. there. That's got to save a bunch of time. So technology is really helping us to basically provide that excellent superior customer service because we really right. want to make sure our patients are taken care of them and time is precious so we want to basically make sure that they get they get in get the care that they need and they can leave timely and the little piece i didn't have was we have free parking on free the top parking. of our building <laughs> oh my gosh that which, is which is big. huge rooftop, rooftop, rooftop 60 parking. spaces yeah, 60 so spaces part of the real estate we bought <laughs> oh nice that was a so shrewd move good job to worry about christine parking, right she did well she did she well, did well. Yeah, she did well wow that okay so i had a question and now i lost it rats um oh well but um so i think that is just amazing Free parking on the top. How do you get to that parking, though? Because I'll tell you, I went around the block six times. It's when right I by the, the press front entrance. It's right, right by the, right the front the right entrance. Side as soon as you building. see right. our building, you're going to go. To, you slow down and you turn right. It's that oh, first driveway okay. going up. Okay, I know where it is now. If you drive too fast, you'll pass it. <laughs> yeah, I noticed. I went around the block six times and ended up in the parking lot next to it. Oh well, I did park and I was okay, but. Wow. So how, now, how long is, has Planned Parenthood been in Hawaii? 52, 52 years. 52 years. Yes, yes. Wow. Yes, but in different, you know, form, formats. Right. Think, well, sure, out, but it started out that way. Just very small, very right. part-time. 
volunteers and so do the doctors volunteer and i remember my question now how many doctors do you guys have staff now one two three four five oh, that's quite a few five doctors that come in at and they're not there on a daily basis. Right, they're coming right. at certain But there's times. five of them that, that right. staff the hot. The, but the, the on the yeah. on a daily basis, we have um, a nurse practitioners that basically are there on a daily basis. I love nurse practitioners. My main doctor is a nurse practitioner because my mom was a nurse practitioner. Right. There you so go. I have you know the highest respect for them, and I. Um, I know that they're really good. Half they the are. time they know more than the doctors know. They right? are. They are. They are. <laughs> I don't know. Well, seems like it anyway. I uh, I know that I love my nurse practitioner. And I think that they, they tend to be more relatable to patients. I know for my own case anyway, I right. find that I find her way more relatable. I'm not intimidated by her. And most and most every nurse practitioner I've ever um, seen is that kind of approachable, not intimidating, and I think that Planned Parenthood more than anywhere that's really needed. Yeah, it is. It is. So was it maybe in the beginning a lot of nurse practitioners that sort of got this going, or did they kind of come on after the I fact? I think it's volunteers, volunteers with a, with. with a physician's uh, supervision. Oh, I see. Know, okay, because so much of it is. Um, you know, talking to the patients and finding out what their needs are, right. you know, and calming sure. them down. I imagine 52 right. years ago, you know, 18-year-old <laughs> going, Oh, my gosh, I can't imagine. Must be, right. like, scared to death. And, hey, you know. 30 years ago, I was scared to death, so I can imagine. Yeah. Right. right? I can totally imagine. Yeah. And even back then, there were people that were against it. But, you know, Dayton, you had said something about um, about how much more support there is. You know, the, maybe the naysayers cry really loud, right. but the support it's behind huge. it is huge. It's and huge. so I know Planned Parenthood's not going anywhere, We're and not. that really makes me feel good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm very reassured by this show today, and I wish we had more time. But well, thank you um, so much for having us. I know we're out of time, but I hope you'll come back. Yes, I want to be able to course. check in with what's happening, yeah. how things are Definitely. going. Um, I want everyone to remember that tomorrow from 12 to 3? 12 to 3. 12 to 3 at 893, no. 839. 839. Yes, South Baratania. <laughs> at 839 South Baratania Street, there's going to be a grand opening of the new Planned Parenthood facility, and I really encourage everyone to go. Please come on down. I want to thank everyone for coming to join us today here on Finding Respect in the Chaos on Think Tech Hawaii, and I hope that you'll join me next time.